Let me share with you three of my best all-time driver videos. You know, driving doesn't have to be that complicated, especially when you get some of the secrets that I'm gonna share with you here. Let's go and get started. Hey guys, welcome to beautiful Heathrow Country Club in Lake Mary, Florida, my home course. And we're gonna talk about three tips that are really gonna help you to hit your driver much better. Now, when you get up to those holes, they got a little bit of water on them. Maybe you get those par fives like this. It's just so much more enjoyable to smoke a driver right down the middle of the fairway and not even have to worry about being in the rough or out of bounds or that kind of thing. So we're gonna do three things that you absolutely must do to hit your best drives. Let's go and get started. All right, so the first piece I wanna talk about is what I call snap, don't slap. So nobody wants to slap at the ball. We don't wanna lose that club head speed. And when we slap at the ball, basically what that means is I'm using my hands kind of back and forth this way. Oftentimes I'll cast a little bit and then the club head outraces my hands and I end up kind of slapping at the ball. The disadvantage of that is now my club face is very inconsistent. One time it's closed, one time it's open, and I'm also gonna have a tough time getting speed from this. So let me go ahead and hit one. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this slow motion video that's gonna come up here in a second. So I'm gonna try to slap at this ball, really cast it from the top. Yeah, and I hit that, I hooked that ball 40 yards to the left, almost onto the road. Hopefully I'd hit a car over there, but it's very difficult to be consistent when I'm doing that. There's no way I can hit a fairway when I'm swinging this way. What's happening is, if we look at our wrist and we kind of put them in front of us, if I bend my wrist to the right this way, this would be flexion with my left wrist. It's called extension with the right wrist. We don't need to know those terms. That would be to the right and then back to the left. A lot of times people think we need to get speed by doing this and by kind of pushing the club through to help to accelerate it. When I do that, that starts to flip the club, to slap the club, and it's gonna outrace my hands. Anytime the club head gets in front of your hands before contact, you are dead in the water. It is gonna be almost impossible to have control of that club face. When it outraces them, it becomes very, very unstable. That's a slap motion, and that's exactly what you're seeing here. Now, a snap motion is very diff different. I still want that club to release, so I wanna have some lag. I wanna get that club to whip on through. It's snapping, I'm getting that speed at the bottom, but it's when I'm doing that and how I'm doing that that's gonna make a world of difference. So as I'm about halfway in my downswing, you'll notice that's my, what we call our maximum lag position. So in that max lag, now I've created this big angle with my hands and my arms. My body's going ahead and opening up, and as I continue down, now my club still has a pretty good size angle in it. If you look at the butt end of this club, if you imagine a laser beam kind of shooting out of there, it's not turned back up yet. My club isn't pointing back up toward my body. It's pointing out kind of down the fairway. Now from here, to get that club to really release, I wanna snap the club head. That's when I'm gonna start turning this club head back up or this grip back up to release the club head and to get a lot of speed from the club head there. So that's what we call the snap action. You can call it the release, you can call it whatever you want to. And the big key to really put this together that we talk about in the Top Speed Golf system is I want this to release about 45 degrees in front of me. So if I imagine a line going from my chest 45 degrees out in front, whenever that club gets fully released, now it's gonna be pointing in that direction. So I'm still letting that club whip on through or snap through, but it's not a slap. I'm letting that happen in front of the golf ball and now my club is just kind of trailing along behind. The golf ball is just getting in the way. I'm releasing out in front and that impact is just happening. So let me go ahead and hit one here the correct way. We'll show you some in slow motion. I'll give you a couple tips on how to do this exactly. There we go, hit that one great, right down the middle of the fairway. I got that lag, and then I got that to release out in front. Now in the first one, we talked about how we didn't want to push with the, the hands or wrist, because now my club head outraces my hands and it gets really unstable. In this one, now I'm, I'm taking my hands here down at the ball. You'll notice my right wrist is angled back in what we call wrist extension, or my knuckles back to my elbow. I'm gonna feel like my palm of my hand is still facing down to the ground. Now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and feel like I do this motion. So if I'm casting a, a fishing pole, my thumb goes from up to really going down this way. That's what's called ulnar deviation or just a casting or a flip type motion. I'm doing that way down here at the ball in that type of a direction. So my hand isn't going this way and cupping, it's going down, just like I'm doing this with a fishing pole. And now as I do that in front of the golf ball, that's gonna release that club. Notice how here, both my wrists are nice and straight. There's no bend in those at all. 
If I was flipping, that would look like this as I'm coming through impact. And my wrist would be cupped here and it would be bent back, bent forward like that with this other hand. That's gonna lead to a lot of inconsistency if you're doing that. So let's pause just before impact. We got a nice angle, this wrist is flat. At this point, my thumb is pulled back toward my body. I've got all this lag, and then we're gonna pause in the straight line release in the top speed golf system, and we're gonna work on this thumb being down. So I went from the up to down. That's that whip action that's happening through there. That's that snap. And when I do this correctly, I feel like I'm just gonna take the bottom two inches of this grip with my bottom two fingers. That's where I'm gonna feel the pressure there. And I'm just gonna snap the shaft, snap that grip right off the club. That's gonna help with a ton of speed. So let's go ahead and pause and do that about 15, 20 times. Pausing here, and then boom, releasing that. Pausing here, wrist nice and flat, wrist turned down. After we've done that about 20 times, let's get that same feeling and more of a full swing, just a practice swing there. So we're not gonna hit any balls yet, we're just gonna get used to that feeling, and then we can go ahead and take it on out to the driving range and start hitting some shots and then out onto the course. All right, so that's piece number one, snap, don't slap. Piece number two, we're, it's the same old saying we've heard for a long time, but with a new twist, we're gonna tee it high and let it fly. Now, the reason you wanna tee this ball high is a couple of things. So first off, if I have a great drive, what's happening are two things. Number one, I'm gonna hit this ball a little bit higher on the club face. Now, as I start to hit it a little higher on the club face, there's actually more loft on the top of your driver. Your driver isn't flat like a, like a sheet of metal. It's actually rounded. If, you're, if you were to take this and bring this out into a full circle, it actually makes about a three foot circle is how the, the face is curved. So it has a slight curve to it, meaning at the bottom of the driver, you're gonna have a lot less loft. This is an eight and a half degree driver. At the bottom, there's probably five or six degrees, four degrees, something like that. At the top, there's probably 12 or 13 degrees. So if I hit it at the top of the face, it's gonna launch higher. That's great for distance. That's what we really want. The second piece is, as I make contact higher, it actually has a gear effect and the ball is stuck to the face and actually puts a little top spin, not really top spin, just less back spin, and it gets the ball to knuckle through the air. That's a real key for high, long drives. The higher I can hit it, hitting it on the top of the face, and the less spin I can have, also hitting on the top of the face, means the longer drives that I'm gonna have. That's the first piece. The second piece to this is I actually wanna be swinging up on the ball. Again, if I'm coming down on it, I'm kind of swiping across the ball, and now I'm getting all this backspin. The ball wants to shoot up, kind of float in the air, and then fall out of the sky. You don't get any kind of good distance. But if I can set this ball up where I'm actually swinging up on it, now again, it's gonna promote that higher launch, and it's gonna promote that lower spin. So the more I can hit up on this golf ball, the better I'm gonna be for creating as much distance as I can. Well, if I have the ball low on the ground, let's imagine this ball is barely teed up on the ground, just like this, it's teed up on the turf. If I swing up, if I try to hit up on this, now I'm gonna miss over top of the ball. No way to make it happen. Plus there's no way to hit it anywhere but the bottom of the face. So I want this ball teed up nice and high so that I can hit it on an ascending angle, on an upward angle, and still make contact with the top of the face. Now with your iron shots, it's gonna be on the ground. We're gonna to have to hit down on it. If we had the luxury of teeing up iron shots, we'd do the same thing, but we don't. We have to hit it off the ground. That's why you hit down and take a divot with your irons. That's the easiest way to hit it off the ground, and that's why this is different with the driver. So a couple things that we wanna note here, and I'll show you some slow motion video with this also. I'm gonna play this up in my stance slightly. I got the ball teed up. For me, I like to have it at least a half a ball above the club or a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and tee this on about three quarters of the golf ball sticking up above the crown. I'm gonna have that a little bit up in my stance. If I really wanna get one, get a hold of one, get some extra distance, I'm gonna play it up here toward my front foot. Again, that's gonna help promote me hitting it on the upswing. And then number three, I'm gonna visualize in my mind that I'm gonna go ahead and knock it off the top of the face. I don't wanna get anywhere near the bottom of the face or it's gonna kill my distance. So I put the ball up in my stance, I've got it teed up nice and high, and now I'm gonna feel like I'm swinging up on the ball and de-lofting the face so that I still get that high knuckler, almost a little bit of top spin on the ball is the way that you wanna think about this. So if I do those things, man, that's really gonna help me to increase my distance. That one felt great. Big high ball, knuckled through the wind, really nice shot. Now I saved the best for last. I know a lot of you guys out there are having those balls that slice if you get into any kind of wind or you struggle at all with distance, 
that slice is actually just going to eat up your distance really, really badly. So if I want to hit it farther, I've got to hit a little bit of a draw or at least dead straight shot if I want to get the maximum distance on there. That's going to get the least amount of spin. That's going to help the ball to really launch pretty fast. So when I'm setting up this golf ball, a lot of times what I have people visualize is that they're coming through and the face is really square. And they imagine they're just going to kind of pull this club through square and the ball's going to go right down the middle of the fairway. And when they have that visualization in their mind, because they struggle a little bit with a slice, the ball just tails off to the right and tends to slice. If you feel like you're going to hit it square and 90% of the time it's either fading or slicing, this is really going to help you. So I want to imagine the club face, imagine that that piece of metal is going to wrap around the outside of the ball. So if I'm looking at this golf ball from my perspective and I kind of put a line through the middle of the ball, that would be dead square. If I hit right on that line, that would be a square shot. Now when we do that, like we just talked about, we tend to slice. That means my club was actually a little bit on the inside of that line. What I want you to feel like you're doing is to get that club to wrap around to the outside of the golf ball and hit on the outside of that line. Now what that's doing is that's closing the face a little bit more. And when you first do this, you're going to start to hit some shots to the left. That's okay. That just means you're doing a little bit too much, but that ball is going to start left and it's going to hook even a little bit more to the left, especially for you guys that are coming over the top. Now I'm getting to the outside of that ball and it's starting left going even farther left. That's all right. Let's start out on the range doing this. And I want you to hit those shots that do go to the left. And then gradually we're going to start to come a little bit more from the inside. I'm going to feel like if I'm at home plate and the second base and the baseball field is directly in front of me, I'm swinging more out toward first base or the, the visitor's dugout. And now I'm going to be releasing that club, getting it to outside the ball. So what's going to happen is the ball is going to start a little bit straighter and then it's going to draw. After you've gotten a few of these in where that ball actually starts to turn on over a decent amount, let's just tone that down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and hit one and really exaggerate though. I'm coming inside and out and I'm letting that face turn over. Now as I'm doing this, the feeling that I'm getting in my hands, if you go ahead and set this club up here, is that I'm taking this club and I'm twisting it just like I'm turning a clock. Like if you can imagine the butt end of the club is a clock face and I'm going to turn that, that's rolling the club. You'll notice when I do that, my left wrist bows. That's what everybody wants at impact. That really helps. That's what the pros are doing. And my right wrist kind of turns knuckles back this way. That's what's going to release that face as I'm doing that. So we can see that would really get that face to turn on over. I'm going to exaggerate here. Hopefully we can see this on camera, but I'm really going to get this one to swing from right to left. There we go. So we saw that one started down the middle of the fairway, hooked over to the left, almost by the trees. I'm right on track. That's what I want to have happen at first if I'm struggling with that slice. Now the second piece to this, after you've hit about 15 or 20 balls doing that, and you've got the feel for that, I'm just going to tone down a little bit. Don't let that club release quite as much to the outside of the ball and don't swing quite as far to the right. And now you're going to have that little baby draw that everybody wants to have to get the maximum distance. All right, guys. So take those three tips. Number one, snap, don't slap. Number two, tee it high. Get that ball to launch high with low spin. And number three, get that club head to the outside of the ball to get that nice draw. Now there's a few common setup issues that I see time and time again, and I think it stems from the axe motion. It feels really powerful when we have a golf club. Let's imagine this is a golf club for a second. If I feel like I'm going to hit this golf ball and I bring this thing over my head and I chop down into the golf ball, it feels like I have tons and tons of power, tons and tons of speed. I feel like I could have chopped that golf ball in two. And I think every golfer from when they begin, when they very begin to start playing, they want to feel that really powerful motion. Well, in golf, unfortunately, that doesn't really work. Instead of having that over the head chop type motion, and I'll fix that, don't worry about the tee, you need to be coming from the inside, get the club in the slot, and then feel like you can deliver that club with a good path to have tons of power and tons of speed. If we continue to set up in ways that get us into that chopping type position, we're gonna lose speed, we're gonna lose distance. So in this video, I'm going to talk about three of the most common setup myths, setup problems that get you into that chopping position rather than being into a powerful position where we can get into the slot. Once you get set up the right way, you're going to hit the ball a lot farther. All right, so let's jump right in here. Let's talk about the first issue that can really wreak havoc on your speed. And if I'm kind of imagining that powerful feeling of me coming down and chopping into this golf ball, we all know we don't want to do that, but it feels so good doing that. 
If I visualize that, one thing that I'll do with my setup is I'll set up in a position where I would have a lot of power coming down in this angle. And if you notice my shoulders, so if I was to put a golf club across my shoulders here, this would be level with the ground. This would be a little tilt away from the target, my head getting farther behind the ball, my spine being kind of angled away from the golf ball. That's really good. But if I'm set up in a way that I feel like I'm gonna come down into this golf ball really powerfully, a lot of times what will happen is my shoulders will get level. I'll get too far kind of to the left if you're looking at my shoulders. And now I'm in this position that feels like I can slam down in this golf ball with a lot of speed, with a lot of, a lot of energy, but it really just doesn't work in golf. So that's the first key. What I want you to do, go ahead right now, even if you're not on the driving range, grab a club, grab a broom, whatever you have to do, follow right along with me on this. And this is really gonna help a ton. Put a club across your shoulders. So hold it right on the tips of your shoulders here. Go ahead and bend forward into your posture. And then I'm gonna feel like my belt buckle goes a little forward toward the target. My upper body gets a little bit more behind it here. My head's behind the golf ball. My chest is behind the golf ball. And you're gonna notice how I create a little bit of an angle with my club there. So just a slight angle is plenty. I don't have to go like this and go really a ton. But what I want you to do is set up very level. And then I want you to tilt away. Let's call that about 10 degrees or so with my shoulder angle. Doesn't have to be more than that. A little more, a little less, not a big deal. So go ahead and do that about 15 to 20 times just to get comfortable getting behind that golf ball, just like this. Then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with my golf club, repeating that same action. So here I'm setting up, I'm getting a little tilt away, and now all of a sudden I've tilted everything much more to the inside. I've created this big area right here where I can swing my hands and arms from the inside. I can get that club into the slot, and that's gonna make it a lot easier to create the real speed that we need and not that over the top type speed. Let's go ahead and try that out. I'm gonna hinge forward, a little tilt to my shoulders. My head is behind the golf ball. Let's give it a whirl. Okay, nice draw right down the left side of the fairway. All right, now the second piece of this is gonna be a little trick with your elbow. If you get your elbow in the right position, it makes it so much easier to come down from the slot, come down from the inside like we're talking about to get rid of that ax chop type move that kills our distance, kills our power. So what we're gonna do here and the way I want you to do this, go ahead and set up to the golf ball. If you're in your living room, just set up to an imaginary golf ball, either way is fine. And I'm gonna get in my shoulder tilt first. Now I'm gonna get about 10 or 15 degrees or so of shoulder tilt like I talked about. And then from there, that's when I'm gonna add my hand. So if I add my right hand from this position, it's gonna be much more under or from the inside when I'm adding the right hand. That helps me to get my shoulders a little more square to the target. It helps promote that tilt. It helps promote me coming more from the inside when I'm doing that. So if you look at my palm of my right hand, it's gonna feel much more underneath the club versus if I'm too level with my shoulders and I add the right hand on there, now all of a sudden my palm is on top of the club. That's what's called a weak grip. And it's very easy for that to turn into a slice or kind of chop down over the top move. So get in the tilt, 15 or 20 reps, add the right hand in there, and then we're gonna close our grip. So a little bit goes a long way. You don't have to have the hand way under here like this, like I'll see some people really trying to exaggerate it, just get a little bit to the right. If you're looking for a few key checkpoints there, I'm looking for the index finger and my thumb. If I cinch those together, that's gonna to be pointed roughly toward my right shoulder. So that's when you know you're getting about the right amount of it. It should look something like that. The second piece of this right hand trick is what I talked about with the elbow. A big mistake when you get your shoulders too level, I'm gonna put this hand on top, palm down, and now my elbow pit is pointed toward the target. That sets me up way too level with my shoulders, way too far to the left, and I really have nothing I can do from this position rather than to chop down over the top and really make a weak swing here. So as I'm adding my right hand, I wanna feel like my elbow, if I look at a, the, the pointy part of my elbow, the bottom of my elbow, I'm gonna feel like it's in toward my hip a little bit when I'm doing that. Now you can also see from this position, if I'm looking from down the line, how that's a little bit under my right forearm. So I'm exaggerating here so you can see that on camera, but this is under or lower. This would be over top. I don't want this or I'm gonna really chop down into it. So set up, get your tilt, add your right hand, palm up, and then feel like that elbow is kind of towards your hip there. Now I'm in a powerful position where I can really get it inside from the slot and get that great, really athletic setup. Now the third piece of this really athletic, powerful setup is gonna be my stance. And I see players all the time go wrong with this and it's actually become some pretty common instruction uh, the last few years is we want our stance fairly narrow or just shoulder width apart. Now, 
We could argue that, but there's a great test for this. Here's what I want you to do. Go ahead and set up to the golf ball, and I want you to start with your stance really, really narrow. Just have your feet almost together, touching. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and make a swing now, and I'm gonna try to kill this golf ball. I'm gonna try to hit it absolutely as hard as I can and see how far I can hit my driver. I'm even gonna get my tilts and everything like I was trying to do with my shoulders and my arm, and let's see what happens. I smoked that one. That's about as good as I can hit one swinging from that way. Down the right center of the fairway, according to my flight scope, I swung 107 miles an hour and about as daggone good as I could hit one. I hit one 280, so not too bad. If everything else in your body is working well, if your hands, arms, shoulders, all that is delivering the club properly, you can do a lot of things with the lower body wrong and still get some good distance like I was talking about there, what I showed there. Now what I want you to do is gradually widen that stance up. Let me grab a couple golf balls here. And I'm gradually gonna go wider and wider until I found my, find my most athletic stance width. So you don't have to listen to me. I don't have to, I'm not the, in charge of exactly what you have to do. Find out for yourself. Start very narrow and then go wider and wider in your stance until you feel like you're the most athletic. For you, let's say you have this really wide, powerful stance like this, that's okay. As long as you move your feet a little bit, that's gonna be completely fine. You can set up that way and still be really good. What I've found for most players is they like to set up, and I've tested this with quite a few players, a little wider than shoulder width apart. So if I stand straight up and down, you can see about how wide my feet are here. If I drew a line vertically from the ankle, it would be outside my shoulders, both my right foot and my left foot. This is about the most athletic I can get from my own personal stance. This is about the width that I see for most players. So a couple inches wider than your shoulders is perfect. Look at Rory McIlroy, the longest pound for pound hitter on the PGA Tour. You're gonna see a nice wide stance like this. This is athletic. My legs are bent. I feel like I could really drive off the ground when I'm doing this. Now, the one thing you don't wanna do from here is I don't wanna keep my feet still. I don't wanna keep my feet kind of suctioned to the ground there and be swinging all arms. I have to go ahead and let my feet move. On the back swing, my left heel is gonna come up slightly. On my follow through, I'm really gonna let that right foot rotate all the way around. That's a very, very good key. But as long as I'm doing that, I can go as wide as I want and still have the movement and the, the freedom in my golf swing. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and set up what I feel like is my most, most powerful stance and let's tie all three things that I talked about together. Number one, I have a little bit of a shoulder tilt. Number two, my right hand is coming into the club a little bit more from the bottom with my right elbow pit up. Number three, I have that nice athletic wide stance, a little bit of knee bend. I feel like I'm playing shortstop here. And now I'm in a position where I can really hit this golf ball pretty daggone hard. Let's give it a whirl. All right, hit that one nicely right down the center. Hey guys, awesome to have you here today. I'm gonna give you some great tips to help you start hitting your drive more accurate more solid and a little bit farther. And I'm gonna walk it through in the basics, let you know some things that took me a lot of time to figure out and are really gonna help your game. So first let's go over alignment with the driver. Now, first off, we can kind of imagine our target line. What I like to do when you're practicing your driver on the driving range is just put some kind of stick or you could put down another club, point it toward the target in the distance where you wanna hit. Now, most players as they begin to play golf tend to struggle a little bit with a slice. So that means that their right shoulder, their right arm, and their body are kind of coming over the top. I'm exaggerating here so you can see this is not this extreme usually, but it's coming over the top, outside, and then that club is kind of wiping across the ball this way with the face open. And that causes the ball to start either straight or maybe even a little bit to the right, and then it really slices off well to the right. Now the tendency there, because the ball keeps on slicing to the right, is to line up farther and farther left. Well, that just exaggerates the problem where now we're gonna start coming more over the top to try to get the ball more to the left. It's gonna slice even more. So the farther left you line up, the more it's gonna slice. What you'll notice with pros is that typically they're gonna be somewhere close to parallel with their target line. What I recommend is to close your stance just a little bit. Have this front foot a little bit more to the right. It serves two purposes. Number one, it's gonna help you come more from the inside and get more of that draw. Now you'll learn to release the face. And number two, as you swing, you kind of imagine this driver's on a hula hoop or swinging on a hula hoop here. As that, drive, as that club starts to move back up, it actually moves a little bit more to the left because you're hitting driver on the upward swing. 
So by lining up a little bit farther to the right, now as you start to swing back up, your club's actually moving pretty square to the ball. So set down this alignment stick, and one of the keys with top speed golf is you have to train things a little bit different. I like to go in the extremes. We'll practice this variability training. I want you to line up one where your feet are way to the left, make a swing, and this is on the driving range, see where the ball goes. Then line up to the right, way to the right, swing one there, still try to hit it towards your target again, and then notice what that does to the flight of the ball and the curvature of the ball. Let me go ahead and, and give you an example of those. This first one I'm gonna line up to the left. Naturally, you're gonna see this ball wants to start slicing a little bit more. So you see that ball started to slice way out to the right. Terrible shot really started to go over there and that's gonna be just in the right rough. Now I'm gonna do the opposite here. I want you to go back and forth doing this for 10 drives. Don't worry about hitting good shots, just notice what happens as we do this. Now I'm gonna line up to the right. Because my target's to the left, naturally I start to roll my hands more and get a bit more of a draw. So now that ball curved to the left. And again, I'm exaggerating here. That's in the left edge of the fairway. But by changing my alignment, instinctively it's much easier to get a draw because you know subconsciously you just know oh i got to release that club face so practice that out on the driving range alternate 10 shots one way to the left one way to the right one way to the left one way to the right then from there you can kind of fine tune find that perfect alignment for your individual swing that helps you to get the ball to go straight all right so now let's move to ball position this is really critical if i want to drive far if i want to hit the ball really far I need to be catching that ball on the upswing. Not a lot of loft on a driver, and essentially what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get this club moving on the upward swing and de-lofting so it's almost like a knuckleball. The ball starts to spin this way and knuckle through the wind. That's the visualization that you have. In reality, it's always gonna have some backspin, but that's what we wanna be picturing in our mind. So to do that, to get the most distance here, I wanna tee the ball up fairly high. The higher you tee it up, the more potential you have to hit it on the upswing, the more potential you have for distance. That's why you'll notice long drive guys tee the ball way up in the air, really, really high, so they can really hit up on it. I want you to tee the ball up at least a half a ball over top of the driver head. I'm going a little bit more exaggerated here just to, to kind of show you what I mean. Play that ball at least, where if you're looking at it from face on, it's gonna be somewhere around the left heel all the way up here to the middle of the left foot. I don't wanna get this ball way back in my stance or I'm gonna to tend to hit down on it more. I may hit some good shots. This is more of a conservative approach. If you just wanna get one in the fairway, this might be good. But if I really wanna get some good distance, I'm gonna play that ball up in my stance. As that club swings, you can imagine the bottom of the arc is here and it's actually working back up as I'm actually hitting into the golf ball. So let's try that out. Put it up in your stance. Remember, line up a little bit to the right here and then I'm gonna work on hitting kind of a high top spin knuckleball is what I'm gonna visualize so that ball really penetrates through the wind and gets my maximum distance. Let's go ahead and give it a whirl. There we go, crush that one right down the middle. Let's take a look, that's about as good as I can hit one there. Let's take a look at the flight scope numbers now and see what my angle of attack was. So in flight scope, it's telling me that that shot was positive 2.8 on the upswing, meaning my club is moving up 2.8, 115 miles of club head speed, 300, and one yard, 300.9 yards of carry, 333, 334.3 on the drive. I can't do much better than that. All right, so now we gotta get some distance. It doesn't matter how straight, how good our alignment is if we're hitting an upswing. If we can't swing that club pretty fast, we're not gonna hit it very far. PJ Tour average is about 113 miles an hour. LPJ Tour average is about 96 miles an hour. And I think the Senior Tour, Champions Tour, those are the 50 and over offers, are swinging about 106 or 104 on average. I can't remember the exact number there. So that gives you a good idea of kind of where you should be if you're an elite player. Um, but the big key here is no matter where you're at, we can make some technique changes that are gonna help you to speed that up. The first one is gonna be how much I turn my body. So if you watch really good longer players that hit it pretty far, they're gonna let their hips, their shoulders, and their arms go really far back. So if I stop my swing here, and this is as far as I go back, my shoulders haven't turned very much, my hands haven't gone very far back, and I only have from here to where my hands come at contact. So I only have from here to there to accelerate this club. This very short amount of time I can move my hands. If I can let my hips, my shoulders, and my arms go farther back, now I'm creating more room 
to accelerate the club. The more room you have, the faster you're gonna swing if you put out the same amount of effort. So unless you're really big, really strong, you're the kind of person that can throw a 90 mile an hour fastball, slam dunk, you know, on a basketball court, I would recommend going a lot longer back. Even if you can do all those things, if you go longer back, you're just gonna get even more distance with that. So let's do a drill here. Now we're gonna go ahead, take your stance, put your arms out to the side, and I want you to practice rotating your body until your arms are kind of pointing what would be behind the golf ball. So I'm setting up here, my arms are turning behind the golf ball. As I come on through, now I'm letting this right foot come up, I'm letting my hips pivot through, my arms will be turning past the golf ball here, and then I'm coming to my good full finish. So it's gonna look like this as we do this drill, and that just gets your body loosened up, gets you making that good full turn, and really hitting it hard. So as you do that, 20 or 30 reps, you're gonna feel that same feeling, or that, that free flowing feeling, then incorporate that with your actual driver. Now make some practice swings, another 20 or so practice swings, getting that good full turn both back and through, then you're ready to hit some shots. On this one, I'm really gonna focus on that big turn, and let's see what kind of swinging speed we can get. There we go, not quite as solid as the one before, but I'll still take that. Felt like I swung pretty hard on it. Let's see what kind of miles per hour we had. All right, my club head speed is 118.5. Very happy with that. 284 carry, it went a little bit lower, really ran over the hill and got 321 total distance. All right, so the final piece here, we gotta release this golf club. The natural tendency, what I always did when I first started to play, what I see basically every golfer, I've seen thousands of golfers in lessons, and every single one of them has the natural tendency when they first start to play, which is as you get from the top, you wanna hit this ball really hard with a lot of speed, so we start to push the club, to cast the club early, and what ends up happening is we lose this angle called lag in our wrist, we burn all that speed up back here, and then when we get to the ball, the club's actually slowing down. What we wanna have happen is we wanna actually increase this lag as we start down, get a good sharp angle here between our club and, the, and our arms, and then from there, we have to release this club out in front. So I want you to do a really easy drill here to get familiar with that release and start to, to get that speed where you need it, which is right at the golf ball. So I want you to just go ahead and take a half back swing. Imagine this is our downswing here and I want you to get this sharp angle between your hands and arms. Now one key is I don't want it this club pointing straight up and down. I want it to be a little bit flatter from here. Some people call this getting into the slot. Really key to being able to hit solid shots over and over. So I get in the slot here, I have this nice angle of lag, and then from there, I want you to open your hips. Go ahead and let your feet rotate, your knees rotate. I'm gonna open my hips, and I'm gonna release that club to where now I've gotten rid of all these angles. That's what we call the straight line release in our top speed golf system and I've let that club whip on through. So a couple practice swings, halfway back, and then go to the release. Hips, shoulders, arms, everything's released in front. Do that about 10 or 15 times just to get the overall feel of that motion. You don't have to try to do it fast. You don't have to do anything fancy there. Just get that feel. Then we're gonna incorporate that same feel as we're making a full practice swing. So your full back swing, I'm gonna feel that lag, I'm gonna feel the club release in front. If I do that, now I'm gonna get that whip action happening right at the golf ball. So here, a great way to feel this and a great way to train differently so that actually you get the feeling faster is exaggerate both extremes. As you start down, cast the club and then try to swing through. So it'd be something like this and you'll see how I don't have very much speed. And then the next one, get a big angle of lag, release the club in front and now you can start to hear that whipping on through contact. So 15 to 20 practice swings alternating. One cast, one good lag one, and then release in front. If you always visualize releasing in front of the golf ball, that makes things so much easier as you go out to play. So that once you get comfortable with that, let's go ahead and hit a couple more, or we'll hit, go ahead and hit on some on the range. I'm gonna go ahead and try to really rip one. I may not be the straightest on this one, but I'm gonna try to see if I can get it farthest, the farthest of any of them that I've had so far. Let's give it a whirl. Oh, a little to the right, still a good drive. I don't think I'm gonna beat my last one. I, I killed the one before that, or two swings ago. So let's see what the flight scope says. Club head speed was 117.4, 290 carry, 320 total distance. I hit it well, follow those keys. Get the right ball position, get your alignment so you can work on those fades and draws and then straighten it out. And then get that lag and release in front. It's gonna make driving so much more easy. All right guys, hope y'all really enjoyed this video. At the end of this, I really talked about how you wanna get some great lag, get that club to whip through contact and release in front. 
Well, that's what we call top speed lag and the straight line release. I'm gonna play a bonus video talking about one of the top lag mistakes that I see players make. It kills their lag. And once you switch this idea, you're gonna to start to add some speed to your swing. So that bonus video is gonna play here in just one second. All you need to do is click the I card up on the screen or the link down below in the description and you'll get instant access to that full video plus five bonus videos from our Top Speed Golf System. I can't wait to start helping you guys with your game. Let's go ahead and get started. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're gonna talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see. And in this drill, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're gonna try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you, can, that you can do to build lag. I'm gonna talk about the science behind why this is the case, and I'm also gonna give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we wanna do is throughout the swing, I wanna have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not gonna set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, look at Tiger Woods, all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be. 